Folks, back by popular demand. Uh oh, we're at the table again. We've had a lot of requests to do our teacup and saucer collection, and it's a doozy, folks. Right here on my take on Home and Garden. Okay, guys, here it comes. Get your popcorn. <laughs> Get your snacks. This is not a 10 minute video. And if you want to click through, you're going to miss it. You'll miss something. So we're going to do teacups and saucers. And of course, out of big sets, I'm only going to show you one each. That's all you'll want to see to get an idea. Um, but I'm going to start out with two coffee cups. Just for those people that aren't sure you know is it a coffee cup a tea cup so let's get them out of the way here is our anniversary set made by Essex and it's more of a modern porcelain with the gold rim this is a flat bottom quite stout completely round coffee cup okay so there's an example of a coffee cup, no doubt. Most of us know it. Now in the Cape Cod 1876 sandwich ware, here is another example. Starting to taper a little bit at the bottom, but still big, big base on the bottom, big on top, heavy, thick, big handle. This is a coffee cup. Alrighty, so we got the two coffee cups out of the way so we can look at a difference. Our first section dominated by England. <laughs> I think they were dominating the tea trade period back in the day but they were and still are dominating the tea cup production. I really surprised myself looking through our collection to get this ready. Uh, how many are English I have three French, quite a few Bavarian, and believe it or not, I'm not kidding, one made here in America. Wow. <laughs> What's that say? <laughs> so here is simply a cutie set. Now this, I know, is going back into the early 60s because I know where it came from and how long it's been in the family. Okay, so this is made in England, fine bone china. Look at that incredible color with the 22 karat rim. The gold typically is on the handle, the rim of the saucer and the cup. Okay, so we're gonna continue with English porcelain. Here's another one, fine bone china made in England. Let me make sure I get, yeah. This looks like the Mother's Day table says so not. That one is by Duchess, but this is just glorious. Look at the color in the pansies. And I wanna clarify something else here. Here's a fine example. Some people will mistake this kind of cup and call it footed. This is not footed. Okay, this is a pedestal. So technically in the collector world and beyond this is a pedestal cup. And I gotta say, the finer porcelain, most of what you're gonna find is a pedestal cup. I'll show you when it's not. Okay, just so you can keep it straight. Now here's another one. You've seen them from time to time. Fine bone china, made in England. Here's our pedestal, which you're, you're just dying to say foot, okay? Just staggering in the yellow roses and the 22 karat rim gold. Just something special about those yellow roses. I'm, you know, I was never a big yellow fan, but especially in the summer and in this fine bone wear, it, it's just really exquisite. Here is another example. It's a different company. This one has a 
particular name. Okay, yes, yeah, Stanley. There's, believe me, I know a lot of them, but I can't remember them all. See the difference. It's really, this is cute because it has a fall feel to it for me with those brown cocoa tones in the leaves. Okay, next, this, <laughs> this little gem is been around in the family longer than I have. So, wow, that's really <laughs> saying a lot, right? And again, it's fine bone china, made in England, real, really different. Now, the gold here is all throughout the background of the piece, okay? On the lesser side, what I call, you got the dominant rose, and typically people are right-handed, so you're gonna see the dominant rose, and when you take a sip, you're gonna see the interior rose. This is the design. On the opposite side, if you're in a conversation, even they get to see a rose. <laughs> so it's really thought out. This one I have on a little stand because that's how we display it. Really different. And this, I'm telling you, is certified 50s. Okay, now we're still in England and we're going to be there for quite a little while. Now we got to go with the Royal Albert, which is just world famous. How are you going to beat it, guys? Anybody with teacups and saucers gets it. The sheer beauty, now here's their yellow roses. Royal Albert of England in the yellow roses. Now they don't cheat a bit. There's four on the, the major side and a view of the rose with a bud on the inside, okay? And the person you're talking to is gonna get that rose with the bud view looking at you while you're sipping your tea. No blank sides here. <laughs> so just just exquisite. The yellow is, is really fun. That's the end of the yellow. Then we got, look at this design, the classic Royal Albert Country Roses. Look at the design. The major side, which is facing the drinker. The little display on the inside. The lesser side here is really the same. It's not lesser. So you're really showing off when you're sipping this cup. And again, old country roses. Here we go again. This is deep in our heart. Angela and I had to find this. We found one, one cup and saucer at my mom's when we had to, you know, reduce her estate. And we were on a mission. Just a cup. She only had, we, we had one cup. We wrote it down, Royal Albert, Sweet Violets, you know, most of you know the pattern. It's just staggering. Beautiful. The major and the lesser sides equal. It's the same. And then the drinker gets a view on the inside wall as well. Royal Albert of England. Hard to beat, guys. Next, we're going to step into another English dimension, which everybody knows, and that is your Johnson Brothers. And this is old British castles, and this is a little different style. This is your classic average guy style, if you will, teacup. It's still in fine porcelain, and if I know some of you have this, some of this set, and when you get a hold of it, you know it's fine. It's very delicate and light and just absolutely exquisite. Old British Castles by Johnson Brothers. Now we're gonna have 
a couple more of them. Here we go again, Jansen Brothers, and this one is called Friendly Village. And you see the smaller base. We don't really have a pedestal. It's, I wouldn't call this a pedestal now, see? And that's the difference. And this is the Friendly Village pattern again, like I said. Jansen Brothers of England. This is a little less fine, if you will, because it's just beefier, it's, it's tougher. It'll, it'll outlast. Okay, here is another Johnson Brothers. You guys know this one. <laughs> I have a real soft spot for this one. Itty bitty base, okay, typical teacup base. We have the major side and the opposite side is the same with your blue Dutch windmills. And of course, the sipper gets to see a pattern inside on the inside wall as well. And this one is called Tulip Time by Johnson Brothers. Oh, break my heart. That one is just something about it. Fantastic. Now we're going to a different company, but we're still in England. These are by Duchess. This one is a multicolored pansy. It's just absolutely precious. 22 karat gold rim. Try to find more than one or two of these guys. <laughs> the, the people that own them, I'm telling you, you know, I'm a great bargain hunter, antique finder, hunter really pride myself on being able to find things, but this is one of them at the top of the list. It's off the chain, all right, because you can't find it. It's loose. <laughs> it's loose somewhere. And the people that own it don't let it go <laughs> very often. One at a time, you'll find these. But look how beautiful. The different pansies, the little smiling faces that they're known for. Now we have Duchess again. Here we are again. This you just saw, we did the Mother's Day table. And again, what I call the major faces the drinker side is more elaborate. And then the lesser side and the, the drinker is getting a view on the inside wall as well top of the faves guys right here <laughs> heart of hearts move over <laughs> just something about it them little smiling faces in that incredible nature's beautiful little violet delicate flower it's incredible still in England we got two now this is a Obvious, real obvious. You're going to want to say foot again. This, these two examples are in lusterware finish, which is kind of oyster shell or how else could you look at it? Just luster. This is Royal Crown and it's numbered. And this saucer is reticulated. That's what the perforations are called. And this is what they call an extra fine bone china piece. It's got really the double helix handle, fine portrait. And this is the major side again. On the lesser side, there's no portrait, but it's still incredible. The saucer here is the portrait. Very colonial look. And then here's the same idea in the fruit. And this is Royal Halsey of England. And it says, very fine bone china. You know, when it's bone china, it's made with bone, but it's actually processed, so it's an ash. 
it's bone ash, you know, it's, it's high in, in minerals that they want to make these so delicate, thin, yet tough, and they can take the heat. Here's a double helix handle, again, in the gold, 22 karat gold trim, in the lusterware, Royal Halsey. And guess who is a favorite of these? The Vatican. I understand the Vatican has some incredible private collections that were made just for them. For an example. Alrighty guys, now we're starting a new category. These are special too. As beautiful as the other ones were, we're entering into the Japanese made teacup and saucer. Now here's your typical rounded form with a small base. And you've seen these in a video, maybe two. <laughs> One of my favorites, God help me with the pink flower, but you know, Noritake Azalea from the early century, 20s and 30s. We have this whole 12 piece set, you've seen it. Gotta love it. Now Noritake again. This one I know exact too, because it was my great grandmother's set that got handed down to me three times. Her mom, my mom, and down to me. Set of 12, and this one's called Brenda by Noritake. Now you're just getting a pedestal. You see the difference here. This one has a pedestal. This one just has a lip. Okay, so that's, be proper to call this a pedestal. Just staggering, guys. And again, the dominant side for the drinker. Oh, you get a view of the inner wall art. The lesser side, you're talking to your company, they get a little taste of more from Japan. This is so cute to me. I only have one of these and it's a smudge. And when you pick it up, you can tell it's ultra fine porcelain. It is so thin and it's just glorious with the florals, all the hand paint work, and it does have gold, 22 karat gold. And what I love here, the little lacy bits around this artwork to make the flower look more three-dimensional is actually with a puffy paint that stands off the surface so you can feel that guys absolutely off the chain here's the lesser side here's what you see no pedestal but it is gorgeous Anybody got a 12 piece set of this? Please tell me what you want for it. It's absolutely off the chain to me. More surprises from Japan. Here is, you may have briefly seen this in a video when I did an oriental table. We have a lot of the Nippon style this stuff is 30s and 40s. We have one, again, one teacup like this. You know, they have their sake cups, but this with the saucer, we have one. No pedestal. The plate matches the art of the cup, and I guess the sides are mostly the same but there is a major and a lesser side there's still a lot on the lesser side just beautiful here's a real surprise there's a couple reasons why this is the only official footed teacup and saucer in the house check this out now there's no mistake 
that this is a three-footed, you'll see four, okay? If you have a two, I want to see it. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Let me know how much you want for that, if that actually can stand up. Okay. Look at how this adds up now. Fine bone china made in Japan, reticulated saucer, absolutely exquisite with the florals. What's the flower? Looks like, oh, an aster. Maybe it could be a giant zinnia. Look at this. 22 carat handle and feet and they want a ton for these now because they get broke unless they're in a collection that's why it's important for for us to have collections to keep this stuff safe for future generations so that they can see them otherwise you know you wouldn't have such a thing you you can't use something like this just every anybody every day so that is the only example of a true footed teacup and saucer in the whole collection now we're going to move on we're going to a new country france we have three examples of french fine bone porcelain the french very fine porcelain you can tell the minute you pick it up like I said look at this exquisite diamond pattern and I'm proud to announce this little cutie is older than I am and it's still in the family wow that's like Mount Rushmore or something isn't it <laughs> now made in France very delicate and intricate okay still in France this is a little newer piece but it's really incredible the detail that they put in these this one is French Limoges you've heard that term it's all over the place they're proud of their Limoges series teapots cups and saucers now generally I'm, I'm a little baffled on this one. It does have a flat cup, so I'm calling this a coffee cup. But I still wanted to show you because of its uniqueness, okay? And this pattern in the French fine bone china is called Tehran. This is your cobalt blue you saw in our cobalt blue collection, if you've been with us. And this is by a company called Verico in the cobalt blue. Now, it's newer, but when I say newer, it's still 60s or 70s. <laughs> These are coming into antique now. They're, they're mid-century vintage, but they are getting pricey. If you like these, you'll see the pattern swirl matches on the plate and the cup and you will be better to find the name Viracle in the center of the saucer than you will on the cup still absolutely exquisite and we have a set of five of these you may remember our cobalt blue little table we'll have to do that one again sometime alrighty now that France is done. We only had three pieces. We're going to go back to Japan and we're going into a little different category. Some of you are wondering, why hasn't he mentioned Demitas yet? The Demitas. So what does that mean, Demitas? It means it's a more delicate, maybe dainty, you know, extra good for women they love that they can get it with their two fingers and hold their pinky up in a fine bone china the saucer is smaller but so is the cup 
Now it's not a half a cup, but a lot of times people will make the mistake of thinking an espresso or a cocoa pot with its cup is a half a cup. They're not even a half a cup. They're more like a third of a cup. So why would you bother with that? Well, if you're in a country where things are really expensive like that, that's one reason. So when you give your company a drink or your like your kids, you know, you're given something that's really expensive. So you're not going to pound it down like Jake the Backwoodsman, bing, <laughs> you know, in a big thermos. <laughs> And if you have any <laughs> civilization to you at all, you're going to sip and have a conversation. That's what it's for, okay? Also, Demitas is real popular in Latin America because they don't fool around. Move over. They are going to have an espresso. You know that, and they're going to have it in a little espresso cup or demitas cup. Here is another example of a demitas cup from Japan. This is a teaser because this goes to a cocoa set you haven't seen yet, and either have you seen that one. And that's a different video. So that's all you're going to see <laughs> until then. Okay, so the last of the Japanese Demitas cup and saucer. Look at how gorgeous. This is another new cocoa set you haven't seen. I don't want to give that all away. We're going to move into Bavaria, but we're going to go to China for one more Demitas cup and saucer. Look at this. Look at this little beaut. Now, if you've had a real espresso, you know <laughs> that's all you need. They make that so strong, it'll take paint off your door or put hair on your door. Something like that. <laughs> this is a cute set, and we have three of these. There was no pop, but made in China. All right, we're going to Bavaria now, and I'm going to start off with what I'm going to call a coffee cup because of its style, its shape and style. One of my favorite collections we have in the house. Heinrich and Company. Absolutely glorious. And this one is called Songbirds. We have a table done in this. A big table. And I am nuts about this pattern. From Bavaria. Fine china. Fine porcelain from the 20s and 30s. Still in Bavaria, here's your Demitas from your Cocoa Pet collection. And you might remember this. This is by Saxon, Saxony. And it is special. This is the one where we have six cups and saucers like they came with like every one the, the collection is still intact there's too cute from Bavaria here's another one again Demitas one third cup and this goes with our cocoa collection you may remember but just to include them in this group. Here's another one. 
and this is springing right out of 1910, which is RS Prussia. Let me read this. This is still within 1910. So it's not quite Art Deco. It's right on the edge of Art Deco. So it's Art Nouveau. There's a fine line there. And after 1910, somewhere 10, 11, 12, it was RS Germany because of the country, the changes in the country. Okay, here is my heart of hearts. You know this one. The creme de la creme. RS Prussia before 1910 oak leaves and acorns I told you it's my favorite thing in the house it's so exquisite it's absolutely exquisite and I cannot find it I can't find a piece to add all you sweet beautiful people out there if you find a piece and you can tell me what you want for let me know Help, help. <laughs> I think we went two years now without one, adding one piece to it. We have a few if you saw some of the other videos. Absolute knockout. Fine porcelain. Okay, to wrap up this like it wasn't enough video, I have one cup and saucer from the United States of America. This should kind of talk to you some, somewhat. I hope we're doing a lot of something else because, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean there's not more, it just means this is all I have even to show. It's, it's amazing. This is from the 1930s Hazel Atlas Company, which is no longer in business. And this incredible farmhouse style is called Modern Tone. And I love it. We just have a handful of things. If you watched our blue, cobalt blue collection, you'll see the Modern Tone pieces. There's plates, there's a dessert, sherbet, a couple more coffee cups and saucers and so on. I just love it. It's your classic roadside diner, farmhouse style cup and saucer in the cobalt blue from good old USA. Alrighty. Guys, if you liked our video today, give us a like, a share, a comment. Send your friends over. Send your collector friends over. Tell them how much fun we have here. We try to show as much as we can, get you inspired, and get you out there in the antique mall, the flea market, <laughs> just bump them out of the way to get at your piece you need right? <laughs> blessings everybody and you can follow us on Instagram and we'll see you soon yes we'll be back all the requests we're going to fill believe me we're going to be out in the garden and we're going to be on the road again Forget it, Willie. <laughs> right here on my take on Home and Garden. Thanks, folks. And we'll see you in the next over-the-top, incredible, informative collector video.